Hawaii essentially banned construction of any nuclear power plant since amending its constitution in 1978. Yet the state is home to over a dozen nuclear reactors. Are these just old reactors from before? No, I won't drag it out. These are reactors that are based on submarines out of Pearl Harbor. So why would a state that already has such a high concentration of nuclear reactors be so difficult to build ones for non-military use? And is this something that's realistically possible? Let's investigate and find out. Welcome everyone, my name is Michael, and Pearl Harbor is home to two of the U.S. Pacific Fleet's submarine forces, which bases about a dozen nuclear-powered submarines in Hawaii. Despite this fairly large presence and concentration of nuclear reactors, the state itself does not have any nuclear plants, instead relying heavily on imported oil from Russia to generate electricity. So why is that? The main reason is that in 1978, Hawaii amended its constitution to essentially make it impossible to build a nuclear plant. No fission power plant shall be constructed or radioactive material disposed of in the state without the prior approval by a two-thirds vote in each house of the legislature. Getting two-thirds of people to agree on anything in politics is nearly impossible, so it's effectively a ban on building nuclear plants in Hawaii. There have occasionally been proposals to reverse the ban. The latest attempt was in 2017, which tried to strike the language from the Constitution. However, it died shortly thereafter in committee, never coming up for a vote. That's not to say Hawaii never considered nuclear power. The main electric utility on the island, Hawaiian Electric Power Company, studied the nuclear option several times over the years, going so far as to even select a proposed site in the 1950s where the nearby mountain ridges would shield the rest of Oahu from radiation in the unlikely event of a release. That site is now an oil power plant. The problem that Hawaiian Electric faced was that nuclear power plants were usually much too big for the needs of the relatively small islands. They needed hundreds of megawatts, not thousands. And they needed to be flexible to power up and down to match the existing wind and solar and to follow the changing demand during the day. And of course, political difficulties were something that the company was just not willing to engage with. As of 2019, the company's current position is no to nuclear, but they have not entirely closed the door. We will build a nuclear plant when the economic and other factors involved will justify our doing so. Hawaii's government passed a law in 2015 with a target to reach 100% renewables by 2045, making it one of the first states to set such a target. However, it has a long way to go. Currently, Hawaii gets most of its energy from fossil fuels, with the vast majority being oil, accounting for over 50% of the total cargo imports. And most of that oil is coming from other countries like Libya, Russia, South Sudan, and Argentina. Oil is preferred because it is easier to ship long distances than natural gas. Hawaii is roughly twice as dependent on petroleum compared to all other states, and, despite its commitments in the transition to renewables, has only seen a modest decline in its reliance on oil over 15 years. Unfortunately, this means that Hawaii's electricity prices are essentially tied to the cost of crude oil. With Russia's conflict in Ukraine in 2022, this has put enormous pressure on Hawaii's main source of oil, causing a spike of over 60% in electricity rates. Long term, Hawaii's renewables goal should reduce and eventually eliminate this dependence, although the benefits have yet to be seen in practice. In September 2022, Hawaii closed its last remaining coal plant, which alone is expected to increase rates by 7%. The transition to renewables has also faced challenges. A recent battery storage project designed to help smooth out the generation from various renewables and offset closing fossil plants has become stuck in red tape and legal issues. Originally scheduled to be operational when the coal plant shut down in September 2022, it is now not expected to begin until mid-2023. In the meantime, Hawaii continues to rely heavily on imports. Coal and oil are resources that we do not and will not ever produce a lot of locally. That leaves us at the mercy of global markets that are beyond our control. We made a transition that we were totally unprepared for. The short-term consequences will be disastrous. So does nuclear make sense to support these goals? It is reliable and new designs are small and flexible enough to be the right fit for Hawaii, especially as the state transitions to more renewables. It could also significantly reduce reliance on foreign oil imports, which are much more subject to price and political instability, as well as huge emitters of CO2. However, nuclear is not currently considered renewable under Hawaii law. Public pressure could change this, and as we've seen, there are periodic attempts to include nuclear in Hawaii's list of energy options. A recent opinion published in the Honolulu Civil Beat advocates small modular reactors. We need to consider the recent and highly positive development of advanced small modular reactors, and even going as so far as to leverage the experience of the Navy, Hawaii's importance in terms of strategic location in the Indo-Pacific, along with the strong defense presence, makes partnering with the Department of Defense a mutual win. A mutual partnership for the SMR development in the state would help defray the costs and bring in nuclear expertise. The Navy has a strong and proven track record of operating nuclear reactors safely aboard submarines, with a dozen of those submarines based right here at Pearl Harbor. 
Despite Hawaii's constitutional restrictions on constructing a nuclear plant in the state, there is a possibility of a loophole. Several companies have designed small modular reactors that are entirely on ships that are built at a factory elsewhere and then could be docked offshore. Waste from the design is kept entirely on the ship before being sent back to the original factory. In fact, this concept of bringing a nuclear reactor on a ship to power a city is not new. It has been demonstrated by the Russian floating SMR, which went into operation in the northern remote town of Pevik in December 2019. However, the intent of Hawaii's constitutional restriction means that any similar attempt to bring a floating reactor to power the islands would certainly face legal challenges, which is an uncertainty most companies would probably like to avoid. So, in the short term, it looks like despite a large nuclear presence at the Pearl Harbor naval base, civilian use to bridge the gap with the ambitious renewables target seems unlikely in Hawaii. But that's not the case everywhere. To find out why small reactors are making a comeback, check out this video. Subscribe if you want to get more content like this, and thanks for watching.